Man, hello guys, welcome to a new video. Just all the thanks to Jesus, our Lord and Savior, all glory to Him. He is just the one true God that we have, the only God that we have. He is the best God to be to be serving. He's our Lord and Savior, guys. He saved us. And I just want to talk to, I just want to direct this video to, to people who are starting to get into Jesus. They're starting to follow him, but they're not quite there yet. They haven't been saved yet. And what I mean by saved is this is the process of repentance and baptism in Jesus name. Once you are baptized in Jesus name, that is when you have salvation by his grace through our faith, right? That's Ephesians 2 8. And it's by and it's two Ephesians 2 9 that says it's not by any of our works, let no man boast. Okay. So we aren't working for our salvation. We're not going around giving homeless people twenty dollar bills. We're not going and paying for people's gas. We're not giving people rides around. We're not doing all of these things for our salvation. Now do we do these things because they are nice things to do because of a faith that does work? Yes, we do these things for people because we have a faith that works. But it's not at any way is it not for our salvation. It's not for salvation because it's by his grace alone. And I believe that grace is upon us because we acted on his instructions, which was to repent and be baptized in his name as his word says. So it's by that grace. He has that grace on us through what we did. We were obedient to him. So he was graceful enough, enough to us to reward us with that salvation, with that eternal life. Right. So I just want to go over to, and I, this got confirmed for me so many different ways um, over the past week. And that's why I'm making this video because it's been on my heart. And I feel like people need to hear this. They were like, everyone needs to hear this. If, if you have not been saved yet, this is very, very important. And I don't just understand. I'm not making this to judge anyone. I'm not making this video to, to, you know, move people the wrong way. I'm just, I, I'm trying to get people to understand this in the best way possible. So I'm not trying to downplay how much you love Jesus or how much you believe in him. That's not at all what I'm trying to do. So you believe in Jesus and that is a great thing. This is the first step. You believing that Jesus is real, you trusting him, you placing your faith in him, that is a great thing. That's a first good step. But now we have to follow his word. And his word tells us in the good news of Luke. This is chapter 18, verse 18 and on. And a certain ruler asked him saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So, they're asking Jesus, what shall I do to, to uh, inherit this eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? Question mark. None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. Okay, so as you know, we are born into a world of like craziness, a world of chaos, right? We're, bo we're born into Adam. Because of Adam and Eve's action, we are born into sinful nature, okay? So what Jesus is saying here is he's saying, here is my law, here is what you are to do for that eternal life. You are to repent, to, to walk away from these laws that you've broken, because let's face it, I know for a fact you've all broken these laws. That's why I came here to die on the cross for your salvation for you, because I love you that much. So it's by my grace through your faith in me that you are saved, okay? So, but, but what we have to understand 
is Ephesians is, is a letter that goes out to the church. So this is to people who have already done these things. This is to people who have already repented and have been baptized. That's what that verse is towards. It's to remind those people that have repented and have been baptized that they are saved by grace through faith. So if you haven't repented and been baptized in Jesus' name yet, you, you are not saved by his grace yet. You still have to act on his instructions, right? So he's telling us here that we have to not do these things anymore, right? But obviously, that's a hard thing to not be able to do anymore, okay? To just stop sinning. That, that's a hard thing to do. We can't do that by ourselves. And that's what, we, that's what we rely on Jesus for. We rely on him and we pray to him and we tell him Jesus. And you have to have a sincere heart too because he knows our hearts. Let's be honest. He really does. He's God. He's, he created all of us, all of this. He knows us. So he knows where your heart is. So when you pray to him and you say, hey, listen, Jesus, I want to do things your way, but I can't stop this sin. I can't stop on my own. I just can't. I, I have tried. I have made attempts. I can't do it on my own. I, I am giving it to you. I'm relying on you here. I'm giving it to you. And you just place it at his feet, man. You just place it. You, you commit it to him. You give it up. You just give it up. Because you can't do it on your own. See, when I started following Jesus, I'm going to tell you about what I did. When I started following Jesus, what I did is I made the mistake of thinking that I had to be clean. That, and what I mean by that is I thought that I had to be free of sin before I went to Jesus. That was the biggest mistake that I, I ever made, I ever knew. I thought that I had to clean my act up before Jesus would accept me. But that's wrong. Jesus says, come onto me as you are. So he's saying, come to me as a sinner, as the sinner that you are. And then together, we're going to build upon this relationship. Now, hence the word together there, because this is a two-way street. You can't expect Jesus to come into your life and make the decisions for you, okay? You have to consciously decide that you want to follow the word of God, follow his instructions, follow his will, right? Now, how this happened for me when I started getting to know my God more, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I started reading this book called the Holy Bible. This is the King James Version, the very same Bible that I prayed for and he placed right into my hands within 48 hours of praying for a Bible, right? So this is a very special Bible to me. This has God's thumbprint on it, actually. So I love my God. And I am so thankful to him for placing this Bible in my hand. And I started reading this Bible and I will admit it was boring. I did not like it a bit. In fact, if I'm being honest, I hated it because I was more into and interested in watching Netflix and playing video games than I was to read a book. In fact, I'm not a reader. You ask anyone that knows me, I don't read books, okay? So this is the only book, the most, the, the important book of the world that I read right here, okay? So this is the book to be reading, and I know that now, and I'm thankful for Jesus for putting that in my heart. The more I read this book, even though I didn't understand any of it, I believed it to be true, and I just kept reading and reading and reading. I disciplined myself every day. I, I got so serious about it that I prayed to Jesus and I said, listen, listen, Jesus, I'm going to read this Bible every day. I'm telling you now, I will read this Bible every day, at least one chapter. And if I do not read this Bible every day, if I miss even a day, if I miss even a day of reading this Bible, you take something out of my life. Take something from me take something from me because I don't deserve all that I have if I'm not being committed to you. That's what I told him. That was me personally. I'm not saying that you have to go and do that. You do what you do between you and Jesus, right? That's your relationship, not mine. 
That's you, that's between you and Jesus. But I'm just saying that's what I did. That's how determined I was, how committed I am still today. I still read this book every single day. I don't miss a beat. I get at least one chapter in, if not more, because that's how much it means to me. Are some days a little bit more um, harder than others? Yes, I'm not saying every day is going to be easy, right? On this spiritual walk with Jesus, not every day is easy, but I'm grateful for it. And it's a heck of a lot better than the old life that I had before. So what I'm saying is how committed to we, uh, so what I'm saying is how committed are we to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Are we so committed to the point where we're willing to give up these sin, these sins to him? We're willing to place them in his hands and say, hey, listen, I can't do it on my own, but I do hate it. I do want to stop these things and I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Please break me free of these habits, right? And so verse 22, he says this. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto them, yet lackest the one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute it unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful for he was very rich. So what this is, is, is it's not Jesus saying that it's a bad thing to have a lot of money. He's not saying that the, the, that no one can be rich or be wealthy in the world. That's not what Jesus is saying here. What Jesus is saying is that he told this person, here's what you have to do to follow me, follow me, Jesus Christ. Here's what you have to do in order to be saved. And he's saying, well, geez, that doesn't sound comfortable to me. I don't want to give up all the stuff that I have to follow you. I don't want to give up all this money. In fact, he felt very hurt about it. He felt anguished about it. Sorrowful means to be anguished. So he felt like, wow, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and so verse 24, it was like, he says this. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Exclamation point. So he's like, what did you, what? How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? So this is like a serious like statement from him. He's like, what? <laughs> As is everything that is serious that Jesus says. But, and then verse 25, it says this, for it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, who then can be saved? And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. So he's saying that if you just give it to me, it's not possible when you try to, like I just said, he's saying right there, it's not possible for you to stop sinning by yourself. It's not. We have, like, seriously, it's not. Admit that to yourself now. Because if you think it's possible to stop sinning, to stop sinning by yourself, I mean, I'm telling you, go look in the Bible and look at all the, the definition of everything that is sin in the Bible. And you stop doing every last one of them. I, I try to do that. <laughs> it's not possible. But he's saying here, you give those things that are impossible to me, to God, nothing is impossible with me because I am God. I made up the word impossible, okay? So nothing is impossible for God, okay? God walked on water. You, he walked on water. Peter's faith was so strong that he walked on water too with Jesus for a few moments there before he, he looked away and doubted and started to sink, okay? So, man. So we just have to ask ourselves, what are we willing to give up for this life with Jesus? The most important life with Jesus. What are we willing to give up? Now, it doesn't... It, Jesus, like I said, Jesus isn't saying sell your house 
and sell your bank, uh, uh, drain your bank accounts and, and live on the street. That's not what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, are you willing to give up the marijuana? Are you willing to give up the swearing to me? Are you willing to give up the gambling to me, the drinking, the smoking, whatever it is, whatever the sin is, all the sin, are you willing to give it to me so I can make you clean again, so you can live with me and, and be committed to me and live the life that I that is pleasing to me, which is to go out and tell other people how great life is with Jesus, because it is, how great life is with Jesus and that they too can be saved, that they too can have eternal life in heaven with Jesus, that we too can be the light of the world, that they too can go and serve other people and put other people before themselves, okay? So th these are all things that are great. He says it, in the prayer, in the prayer that he says um, in the Lord's prayer, right in the middle of that prayer and even the Sermon on the Mount. This is the whole thing with the Sermon on the Mount too. If if you just look at that verse, it says on earth as it is in heaven, okay? On earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus is saying that that yes, we're not all in heaven yet, but he his his goal right now is for heaven to be mirrored upon earth heaven to be mirrored upon earth. Okay. That's a beautiful thing. So right now, like when, when you go around and, and, and you see Christians like, like truly like saved born again, Christians. Okay. With the like full on fruit of the spirit Christians. Okay. Light of the world is what we're, we're called to be the light of the world. So when we see the, the light in the places we're going into, that is a mirror of heaven. And that is all through Jesus. That's a beautiful thing. Like, that's amazing. Like, he's lighting it up out here. You, you know when the Border Patrol, when the United States Border Patrol, they see people illegally entering into the country and it's pitch black out, but they know where they are because they have the night vision. And they're just trying to like, they're tactically trying to move in on the, on the subjects, right. That have illegally entered into the country. And then they, and then they just have these like bright lights, right. That they have not turned on yet, but they're just, they're just there. And they're just waiting for these illegal immigrants to get into a certain area to where they can safely apprehend. Okay. And then they just tell the person in charge is like, light it up. And then like all the lights turn on and then there they are everything's, you can see everything. So when Jesus calls us to be the light of the world and we go out and we be the light of the world, those that are not quite in the light yet are going to start seeing the light that is Jesus through us, right? Now, now that's not to say we are Jesus because that's crazy. That's blasphemous. Don't say, don't say that you're Jesus, right? But Jesus is working through us. We are, our minds are being renewed more and more each day. We're being transformed more and more each and every single day in the mighty name of Jesus, guys. All in Jesus' name through Jesus, okay? By his grace through our faith, we are saved, okay? So each and every single day, people will see that light in us and they'll say to themselves, how do you have so much energy? How are you so positive all the time? Why are you always smiling? You're creeping me out. Because they live in that world of darkness. They live in that world of darkness where they're so used to everyone being miserable. They, they, they expect you to be crying. They expect you to, to be angry and be mad at the world. They expect that because of all the, all the tragic stuff that happens in, our, in the world, all the afflictions. For the, for the wages of sin is death, guys. But God's gift is eternal life. There's so much truth to that. It's all true. Obviously, it's all true, right? But I'm just saying, it's clear as day. There's darkness in the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And he calls us to be that light with him, okay? His, his, his overall light 
is shining through us, shining through us. And man, when we get the gift of the Holy Spirit, that increases like, <laughs> man. So, <sighs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's not possible without him. Without him, it is very impossible. <laughs> Man, it's faith but the size of a mustard seed that can move mountains. Faith but the size of a mustard seed. That's all that Jesus needs from you. Faith but the size of a mustard seed, man. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace. I'm not a good singer, so I'm not going to go further with that. But <laughs> man, thank you, Jesus, though. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray in Jesus' name that you guys took something from this today. I believe you did, but this was just on my heart. Yeah, like, man, I was, I'm was. i always passionate when I make these videos, you know, and, and this was one of those videos where, where it's been on me for a minute because it just drives me crazy. I, I, I need to see people saved. I need to see it. I need to see people saved. But it's a two-way street. God gave us a free will. He cannot force you to give up those things. You have to get into a place where you can give them up yourself, where you are willing to give them up. Man, in Jesus' name, amen.